Hey guys, it's Martin Sibley here, just back from an amazing trip to Tallinn in Estonia and I wanted to share a few thoughts and observations about the trip from an accessibility point of view. So first off, you're probably wondering why I was in Tallinn, Estonia, which is a fair and reasonable question. Now it's actually nice to go to a new place in Europe. I was in Egypt back at New Year but generally I've been going to some of the more familiar and well-trodden places. So it's really nice to go somewhere a little bit different and, and new. The reason that I was there was Mind Valley University. Now this is a chance to go away for about a month every year to a new city and you get the chance to hear from all the world leading teachers and authors on personal development and business and marketing too. So it's a really good kind of upskilling and learning and development opportunity while you're in a new place in the world and you get to hang out with the other students as well. So once we decided that we would return after going to the opening one in Barcelona last year, it was time to book the flight. So Ryanair, they've got a bit of a bad press with disabled travellers and for good reason, there's been some bad stuff happened over the years. I've also had broken equipment and wheelchairs as well but they fly to so many places and really they are the cheapest that you can get out on the market as well so having flown with them many 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 times generally it's always been okay and when they have broken things like the wheelchair and the luggage they've always been quick to rectify it so just want to clear that one up that for me it's um it's a, still a good airline for getting from A to B, as long as you're not expecting any thrills. So with the online booking, I'm able to say that I'll need help getting on the aeroplane to be lifted and also to take my equipment like the wheelchair, the hoist, the shower chair. So once that was all done, it was time to sort out the accommodation. Now, I really, really would have preferred a private rental place, um, specifically to have had a kitchen and been able to buy food and cook up what we fancied for some dinners. I'm sure we would have eaten out as well, but we were there for two and a half weeks, so it was quite a long while. So in the end, I had to book the parking by Radisson simply because of the wheelchair access and particularly the roll-in shower. Now, another downside of that is it was more expensive than a private rental, um, but you know, that's the, the way the cookie crumbles sometimes when you're a disabled tourist. So once that was all booked and sorted, I also needed to work out how I was going to get from the airport to the hotel. So after asking around in the Accessible Travel Club on Facebook, I was pointed in the direction of a company called Termac. So they were able to come with an adapted vehicle with a ramp um, or a lift rather. And uh, yeah, 20 euros, pretty reasonable price. And that got us to from the airport to the hotel in about 15 minutes. So that was really, really good. So uh, once we were there, uh, transport wise, getting around day to day, because we wouldn't have really needed Termac to just get us within the city. There is uh, public transport like buses and trams. From understanding, some are accessible, um, but not all of them. And because it's such a small, quaint, lovely city, it was fine getting around in the wheelchair and Kasha had the bicycle anyway. Um, the old town, the medieval part, was very cobbly and the pavements didn't always have drop curbs. So that did cause me some troubles. Um, but it was still lovely to sort of go back in time and, and enjoy that culture and seeing everything that how it would have been a long time ago. We ate at um, some of the restaurants. One was called Shkili. And unfortunately, I couldn't get in the building or on the terrace. So they brought the tables just off the terrace and we kind of ate on the pavement. But it sounds worse than it was. It actually was still a fantastic evening. And despite the bad access, the people and their attitude was just second to none. So I do applaud them for making what could have been a bad situation uh, better. Another restaurant was Older Hansa. And that's where it's really old school. Uh, it's like being Game of Thrones. 
and the people, the waiters and the waitresses dress up in old clothing as well. So that was like a really enjoyable meal. And I had a shot or a schnapps called Monk's Bride. And it was because the monks didn't have a bride. So apparently they had this shot to, to get their kicks and their thrills. So that was quite funny as well. Um, and then one of the other amazing memorable things we did was to see the sun rise over the Baltic Sea about three in the morning. There's only about three hours of night time that time of year there because it's so far north. And after a party, we went off to by the sea and it was blowing a gale. It was actually quite, uh, not cold, cold, but definitely colder than the weather had been back home. Uh, but nonetheless, it was a really special thing to see the sun come up over the Baltic Sea. Um, and obviously we were doing our lectures most weekdays as well. So there wasn't an abundance of time to be able to go and see everything that Tallinn had to offer. But we certainly made good use of our evenings and our weekends and just going around the shops and getting to know the, the people and the culture of what is a lovely place. Um, particularly the food is all very fresh and organic and grown nearby. So I'd really, if you ever go, recommend trying out the, the local foods, whether it's from the market or the restaurant, doesn't really matter. Um, so overall, another successful trip, definitely a place that I would love to go back to one day and I'm, I would urge you to check it out as well. Um, if you have any questions about access, please do shoot me a, a comment below. And um, in the meantime, I'll see you again for the next update. Bye-bye for now.